Happy Friday, everybody. It's finally Friday again. Favorite day of the week. Weekend is here. And we are stitching. We are getting ready to celebrate Thanksgiving here in Canada. And I thought it might be interesting. I know many of many of you who join in with me on these Friday night stitch with me videos are from around the world. Many of you are in America in the in the USA who celebrate Thanksgiving in November, the end of November, and I thought it might be kind of fun to talk a little bit about why we celebrate Thanksgiving in October because it's it's kind of it's 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 one of those things frankly that I've always wondered so I thought that might be something a little interesting to talk about today so I found as you do with a Google search isn't modern technology pretty amazing any question you have any question at all just type it into that Google search engine and it is pretty amazing the information that's just at our fingertips so anyways I thought I would I thought I would read you what I found out because I thought it was pretty interesting so it says here that the origins of Canadian Thanksgiving are more closely connected to the traditions of Europe than to the United States. Long before Europeans settled in North America, festivals of thanks and celebrations of harvest took place in Europe in the month of October. The very first Thanksgiving celebration in North America took place in Canada when Martin Frobisher, who was an explorer from England, arrived in Newfoundland in 1578. He wanted to give thanks for his safe arrival to the New World. That means that the first Thanksgiving in Canada was celebrated 43 years before the Pilgrims landed in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Now, I never knew that. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Anyways, it goes on to say here, another reason for Canadian Thanksgiving arriving earlier than its American counterpart is that Canada is geographically further north than the United States, causing the Canadian harvest season to arrive earlier than the American harvest season. And since Thanksgiving for Canadians is more about giving thanks for the harvest season than the arrival of pilgrims, it makes sense to celebrate the holiday in October. So what are the differences between Canadian and American Thanksgiving? Other than the date, not much. Both Canadians and Americans celebrate Thanksgiving with parades, family gatherings, pumpkin pie, and a whole lot of turkey. So there you have it. I thought that was kind of a good summation of what I found out about why we celebrate in October. So pretty cool. Now, as far as that last statement about pumpkin pie, it is true. We do celebrate with pumpkin pie and turkey, just like your Thanksgiving meal. Our Thanksgiving meal is pretty similar, except I have to tell you, I hate pumpkin pie. I mean, I, I loathe pumpkin pie. And I know that that is a very strong opinion about pumpkin pie because lots of people love it. I can't stand it. It's a vegetable. And there's lots of other things that are vegetables that, you know, make good desserts. But pumpkin pie is just not, I am not all into that. To borrow an, a popular floss tube device of being all into something 
I am not all into pumpkin pie. Now, pecan pie. Now that's a different story. Pecan pie or apple pie, those would be my Thanksgiving desserts of choice. The pecan pie is similar to the good old Canadian butter tart. And if you don't know what a butter tart is, let me tell you, it is the most delicious thing ever. And it's very Canadian. So lots of Canadians have butter tarts on Thanksgiving as well. We have a neighbor up north at the cottage who actually makes them from scratch. And I've been meaning to visit her and get her recipe and have her show me how she makes them because they're pretty darn good. Delicious. So yeah, Thanksgiving food is on my mind. You know, this is, it's, we're starting that season, aren't we? It seems like there's already always a holiday around the corner that involves food. One way or the other. So, okay. Now, let me get rid of my device here. I had my little lesson on Canadian Thanksgiving versus American Thanksgiving. Let me flip my stand over here so I can, whoops, sew my end in. We'll secure it a couple of times here since threads are a little further in between. I've got my little pink and green scissors today. little guys there. So as you can see I'm working on the same piece that I was working on last week. This is a mystery stitch along by Modern Folk Embroidery. Now I had some questions last week about this piece. People thought maybe it was a long dog sampler or uh, they didn't they didn't know what it was. They hadn't seen it before and so let me just say that again. It's Modern Folk Embroidery, and I put all the information about what I'm working on, what I'm stitching. It will be in the drop-down box below where you can find it. So this is the Mystery Seasons Stitch Along. There we go. Whoa. Really almost dropped my camera there. Sorry about that. Hopefully you're not seasick now. Maybe you're not even looking at all. You're busy working away on your own stitching. Now, let's see if I can get this straight again. How's that? Better. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So, Modern Folk Embroidery Mystery Season Stitch Along. Of course, uh, Jacob de Graff, the designer of the pattern, has just come out with the most recent month. It's a 12 month stitch along, mystery stitch along. And if you've seen his work on Instagram, you know how absolutely gorgeous this design is. And I am way behind. This is still actually February. This is February's part of the design that I'm working on right now. So I'm I'm really behind, but that's that is okay. I'm really enjoying it. I am stitching this on a 40 count R&R &R Reproductions linen in the Patriots Brew colorway and I am using a discontinued silk. I'm really sorry to say I do all I get that question a lot. What silk are you using? I absolutely love it. Where can I buy it? And I'm very sad to say that you can't buy this particular silk anymore. It, this is old stash of my own, and I'm mixing in a little bit of stash from a friend named Barbara who sent me uh, some of her stash so that I would have enough for this design. And But, you know, it is the name of it is called Zafra Cobalt. So it's a cobalt blue. If you go on to either Dinky Dye's website or 
uh, silks for you and and just look at the different colorways that they have I bet you any money that you would find a color that you fell in love with and then you could make it your own sometimes my eyes play, play tricks on me with this 40 count and I have to make sure that I'm aiming for the right hole. I am stitching two-handed, if you've noticed. My dominant hand, my right hand, is in the back. And according to people in the know, and I believe Myra, Myra Richmond uh, informed me of this, and in fact, I'm gonna be meeting Myra possibly in the in the new year and Myra was Myra was taught uh, the Japanese what was what, what were they what were, oh, my brain has fled in a nutshell Myra says that the correct technique for stitching two-handed actually has the right hand on top and the left hand on the bottom and with some practice she says it, it's quite manageable now because I've been stitching so long with my dominant hand on the back and my left hand on the top I'm a bit lazy about finding and changing my ways so I'm looking forward to meeting Myra and watching how she stitches and then maybe I'll be brave enough to try it the other way. But for now, I'm going to be stubborn and stick to my old ways. So I think it's a fairly quick way of stitching. As you can see, you can, you can zoom the needle back and forth with pretty good accuracy fairly quickly now it's probably I'm sure the sewing method uh, is probably even faster I know that Yanni our lovely floss tube friend Yanni is she is an, an absolute master of the sewing method and she is really uh, quite fast with her stitching if you ever watched her Stitch With Me videos, they're really fun to watch. I like her Spanish videos as well. I just like to put, I don't understand Spanish. You know, maybe I could order a cerveza. That's about it. And I could say see. Sí. I could say yes and no. And please. And thank you. <laughs> That's about it. But I just like to listen to her talk. I love the Spanish language. I just love listening. I love hearing it. It's like French, but I'm a little bit better with French than Spanish. All right. That thread went quickly, didn't it? I'm using shorter lengths. This is Barbara's uh, silk that I'm using at the moment. And I'm, use, I'm being very, very frugal with her silk because I'd like to send uh, a large portion of it back to her because it's quite a treasure that uh, she sent me. So I know I say a lot of the same things. I repeat myself, but I also know that generally I have, I have uh, new people come to visit me all the time. So it's nice if you are watching what I'm doing and wondering Maybe I'm answering your question that you've got in your mind while you're watching. There we go. My son had his meet the teacher night tonight at school. He was quite excited about showing us the work that he'd done. And believe it or not, I actually bowed out of going. And John took him. 
and I, I had, a, I had some things that I had to get done that were time sensitive. So sadly, I missed it. However, John went and took some pictures, and Nicholas was just pleased to have one of us there to show off what he'd done. And his teachers are very proud of him this year. So far, so good. He's working hard. He's doing well. So, whew, that's a relief. I should tell you, I, I'm going to tell stories about my son here. Um, my Both my kids are very different from each other. And it's it, isn't it funny with our kids how you can recognize certain traits in them that maybe seem a bit familiar? And, and also other traits where you think, where the heck did that come from? My daughter is very much an A-type personality. She is organized and punctual and just very, very focused on the task at hand. Whereas my son is a little bit more of a dreamer and he is easily distracted and he's a talker. Boy, does he talk and talk and talk and talk. And you know, I wonder where he gets that from. It's not like I know anybody else in this house that likes to talk a lot. So I think he comes by it honestly. He's also very good in French, which was one of my better subjects when I was his age. So, whereas my daughter seems to be excelling in the maths, which was not me at all, Nicholas seems more geared towards the arts so far. However, he is also doing very well in math. So, you know, he's, he's young. The jury's out which direction he's headed in. But it does seem like my daughter Sarah is headed towards something to do with math. Time will tell. We're reaching that big life-changing stage with Sarah where she's starting to think about universities and applying and all of the, all of the stuff that goes along with that. So big change is coming in our household in the next year. A year from now, she may choose, she may have chosen to uh, go to the university that's here in our town. We have a very well-known, respected university here in London, Ontario. This is the University of Western Ontario. It is where both my husband and I went to university my husband has a degree, he has a master's degree in geography, and I have a bachelor's degree in music performance, with my specialty being flute, flute performance. And so we both went to Western, and it you know, was a very good school for the both of us. She may decide to go there but it is only one option on her list. So she's got some big decisions to make. And, I, you know, it, it's exciting. It's nerve-wracking. But I have to tell you, watching her grow up and, and come into her own has been pretty special. So it's an exciting year ahead. And I like that we had our kids so far apart Nicholas is seven years younger than Sarah. And so Sarah will be moving on and moving into her adult life. And we'll still have Nicholas here with us for a little while longer, which is pretty nice. Sorry, my hand is right in the middle there, isn't it? Hopefully you've 
you know, you're probably, well, at least I hope you are, just stitching along with me, not really looking at my big giant hand in your screen. It's a bit disconcerting, isn't it? I sometimes see uh, pictures, people post pictures of the fact that they're watching my video and they'll post it on Instagram or, or Facebook or something. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always a bit thrilled, really, because it's sort of like, oh, look, somebody's, somebody's actually listening to me and watching me. And that's kind of, that, that never gets old. I'll tell you, that never gets old. But sometimes the picture is with my enormous hand on their massive TV. And it's like, oh, I wish I'd done a better job with my manicure. But uh, I, I have to be completely honest with you. I'm just not that kind of girl. I don't make a very good girly girl, I'm afraid. I'm not great at things that other women seem to do so effortlessly and naturally go to the salon and have manicures and spend, you know, hours on hair and makeup and, and things like that. I, I just, I'm too busy doing other things. And so the only reason I have nail polish on at all is because I've been doing these knitting tutorial videos and you know, even the, the Friday off the grid, I used to make sure that I always had nail polish on, but then I just got a bit lazy because I figured, well, people were, people still seem to be enjoying hanging out with me, even if I didn't have painted nails. But for the sock tutorials, I thought, oh, heck, I'll paint my fingernails. Uh, but I certainly don't go and get a manicure, as you, I'm sure, have noticed. It's very much... Uh, homegrown manicure. Anyway, there's a little truth about myself. I don't make a very good girly girl. How's that for a confession? Oh, but I was never much of a tomboy either. I was sort of stuck in this weird kind of in-between. Never very good at sports, but never very good at the sort of feminine things that all the other girls were good at. But you know what? I know how to use a needle. So I guess I was good at some of the more traditionally feminine things. Though, I have to say, I'm really glad that so many men are becoming more involved in our craft. Because, you know, it used to be originally way, 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 way back, you know, historically speaking, men were the knitters and the, the tapestry weavers. It, it was men and women were certainly not, uh, you know, there was too much, ex, ex, not for the, I mean, perhaps for the aristocracy, but uh, certainly not for the regular Joes like you and me. Hopefully I've got this right. I think so. There should be one in between. And then I'm gonna have some one too. Mmm. Oops. I think I've yeah, I came down one too soon. I'm not looking at my pattern. I'm trying to match the other side, and that was a mistake. Because of course it's too far away. So just going to rip out the last four stitches or so and have a redo here. There we go. Satisfying, isn't it? Ripping out silk, too. It always, uh, it tends to sound good when it's coming out quickly. Very attracted by certain sounds and I know many of you are as well. Sounds of like floss being pulled through fabric and things like that. When Ginger Gerald was working on his Riolus Owl, the sound of his, it was a special kind of uh, wool floss that came with his Riolis kit and it made 
a really wonderful sound when it was going through the fabric. I loved listening to him stitch that owl. Isn't that funny? I, and I know that that type of, uh, that type of sound and the effect that it has on you has a very particular name. I just can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Anyways, this is now the end of February. So this here is my cutoff point for February and then it goes into obviously March, which I don't have the pattern in front of me. I know that the the band here matches this this quarter matches this quarter here. So really I could just keep stitching uh and I'll, I'll go for a little ways and then I'll come back in and I'll fill in these little guys that are up there. So let's see what we've got here. So I keep thinking about pumpkin pie and how much I dislike it. Isn't that funny? I'm so food oriented. I'm already thinking about Thanksgiving dinner and what we're going to eat. We are not hosting this year. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but at the cottage, we celebrate with four families up there who we have known for many, many, many years. And we're very good friends. And the four families take turns hosting Thanksgiving dinner. It's a very casual affair. Uh, whoever is at the cottage is invited. So, you know, whoever, I mean, if you have relatives up, if you have, um, if you have friends visiting you, everyone's invited. And this year, I think, is going to be one of the biggest years yet. And fortunately, it's not at our cottage. So I heard rumor that there are going to be 29 people at Thanksgiving dinner this year. So I hope that the family who's hosting it this year is ready for the onslaught because boy, that's a lot of people in your space, but it is always just a ton of fun, a ton of fun, very relaxed and just good friendship and food. So I'm really looking forward to it. I always do every year. It's always a good time. And then Monday is a holiday. Thanksgiving Monday is a, it is a bank holiday. Is it also stores close on Monday? I can't remember. There's only like two or three days out of the calendar where the stores are not open on a Monday. Christmas, uh, obviously if Christmas falls on a Monday, Christmas, there's, nothing is open. I want to say Easter Monday, everything is closed. But Thanksgiving might be the other one. Oh, that's terrible. I can't remember. And my husband owns a retail store. That's bad. Don't tell him I didn't know. For sure. I think I wait for him to tell me every year. Are they open or are they closed? I don't have much to do with his store. I used to. I used to do um, a lot of the data entry work for his business. And then that was sort of work that I did in the daytime hours. And then I have a private music studio that I teach kids and adults private music lessons in the evening. And then Evertote kind of took off. Uh, Evertote, the last year has been, it's, it's been incredible. And so I gave up the work doing uh, the data entry for my husband. And let me tell you, he was not much pleased, but uh, you know, it was time. I'd been doing that work for 20 years. And so it was, uh, it was time. 
I do still teach, but my studio is smaller this year. I'm down from teaching over three nights to just teaching two. I still coach my adult flute choir, who are really, truly some of the loveliest women I've ever known, and I'm honored to lead them in a weekly rehearsal. They're just, they're kind and lovely women, and they enjoy it. They come to my house for flute rehearsal, flute choir, because they enjoy it. Now, I don't, I've, I know I've said this before, but if, you've, if you haven't heard me talk about them, our group name is Highfalutin, which one of our members came up with when we needed a name for our group before our yearly recital. So Highfalutin was born. And those ladies are the highlight of my week. even when they don't practice. <laughs> and they do practice. They try really hard. So it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Okay, I think I'm at the end here. So let's weave it in. There we go. Okay. So it is now, what time is it? It is 9 p.m. on Thursday night. I fooled you, didn't I? You thought it was Friday, but for me, it's still Thursday. That way I'm not rushed doing this and I get to take my time with the editing and get it loaded up so that it's ready to go for 6 p.m. tomorrow night, Friday night when it's the real Friday. And we can all celebrate Friday off the grid so look at that look at that oh it's beautiful okay so i came all the way up here and over so nice nice some nice work on my border there i'm quite pleased with what i got done tonight okay so if you're new around here friday the idea behind friday off the grid is taking six hours on a friday night from 6 p.m. your time zone until midnight, sitting down with your project and a drink or two and some floss tube or some TV or an audio book and stitching your heart out. Just a little bit of hermiting, introverting, and just putting some stitches into your beautiful projects and enjoying some time for yourself. And you know, it doesn't have to be a Friday. It can be a Saturday or a Sunday or any day of the week that you decide is gonna be that special time for yourself. We have a Facebook group called Friday Off The Grid and there are a lot of members there and the weekend on that group tends to get very busy, but very busy in a really good way because your Facebook feed fills up with some of the most beautiful stitching you've ever seen and everybody's starts and finishes are celebrated. Um, even, you know, a tiny little bit of progress. If you put in a few stitches and you share it, generally you'll get some feedback and some, you know, cheering and positive, positive kind words. It's a great place to be. And it really has, it has revamped the, the entire Facebook experience for me because I don't really use it for anything else. Now we've got the sock group on there, and so far that group's looking pretty great too. That's the Learn to Knit Socks with Us group on Facebook. If you're following along with the knitting tutorials that are on my channel, we are into socks. We're into sock knitting. So uh, we, I, I created a Facebook group only because socks seem to be that sort of tricky knitting thing that people either take to it or they try it once and it doesn't work and they get very frustrated and give up but lots of people really want to learn how to do it so we're taking our time and uh, the Facebook group is there so that my friend Louise who's a knitting teacher can help out with questions and concerns and and problems anything that uh, you know that that crops up so 
it's a, it's a lot of fun. So anyways, I guess that's it for me tonight. I hope you've enjoyed stitching with me. I've certainly enjoyed chatting with you. Like my son, I'm a talker and I could talk all night long. So it's really nice to feel like I have somebody to talk to uh, who understands what I'm talking about and gets why this is so fun for me and doesn't just think that it's, you know, an old lady craft that uh, is a silly way to spend your time. It's really not. Okay, so that's it for me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. If you are Canadian, I wish you a very happy Thanksgiving and I will see you all on Tuesday because, because Monday is a holiday for us, I will not be recording a floss tube video on Monday. It is a holiday for us and I'm going to take that day and I'm going to spend it with my family. So I won't be recording a video on Monday but I will be recording a sock video on Tuesday because we are starting our heels for our socks on Tuesday. So that's it for me. I hope you've had a great time. Happy weekend, happy stitching.